The 6.5 is on the road here in the HP garage in Palo Alto. This is where Silicon Valley started. You hear about garage innovation. It started in the HP garage, and it is also HP Imagine time. Dan, we've seen announcements on PCs. We've seen announcements on workstations, consumer, commercial, print, services, and a lot of AI wrapping it up together. Yeah, we knew that AI would be a big trend. You can't really attend a tech conference, really any conference these days, and not talk a little bit about that. But I just have to say there was something inspirational just walking up to this place. I mean, we know it's a historic uh, place here in Palo Alto. And there's, you know, we're sitting in the middle of greatness right here. We're sitting in the middle of, you know, a company that's, you know, 100 years almost uh, of innovation and, and disruption. And, and here we are again, another moment of disruption is right in front of us. Yeah, one of the uh, the areas that I think gets discussed a lot, but to me it's never enough, is uh, the role of AI developers, whether that's front-end developers, back-end AI developers, and the tools and the services they, they use to crank out this literally this amazing stuff. None of this uh, would happen uh, without uh, developers. And there were some announcements here uh, uh, today, and in fact, uh, uh, enhanced solutions, upgraded, even better solutions for more capabilities from, from APC here. And it's our pleasure to welcome Jim back to the 6.5. Jim, you are a busy guy. Big announcements today, APC. Big announcements here at Imagine. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I, I love talking with you guys. Another well-dressed guy in a blue blazer. I <laughs> love it. You know, but, uh, are we are we too well dressed for tech these days? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to be underdressed ever. Though uh, no worries. Well, well, Jim, you heard the the kind of preamble. I mean, look, AI is taking over the world. And I know in your world, in the workstation space with Z, um, you know, by HP, you've got the Creation Center. You're mm -hmm. you're really pushing and enabling yeah. the developer community. Talk about kind of how Z uh, by HP is enabling that particular group. Talk about what, how you're thinking about making things easier for AI development. Yeah, great question. So um, we've actually been working with data scientists for several years now. Of course, it's been accelerating and growing as the capabilities come online. And one thing we've heard fairly consistently in the early days and even now, directly from customers and with a lot of the, the studies we've done with some of our partners, you know, we've commissioned some studies, is um, whether they're, they're general practitioners or they're the best of the best specialists, they're not entirely happy with the tools that they have for creating um, AI model. And it goes beyond just generative AI, but right. you know, all the model development, yep. machine learning. Um, there's lots of opportunities to address pain points and make it easier. At the end of the day, as much as we love our workstations, and we do, and we think our customers do too, um, it's more than just delivering a product with the best specs. Um, they really need solutions that are going to help streamline their workflows and make it easier for them to deliver models that they trust. For sure. Uh, and, you know, I was just talking about the developers. I'm glad you added in data scientists because uh, it, at least what we're seeing in our research, one of the biggest challenges, particularly for enterprises uh, to get generative AI going, is the data itself. And when you have the data scientist matched with the front end developer and the back end developer, this is where all this, uh, this magic is happening. One of the challenges um, that, that is loud and clear, mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, we've heard in the cloud, there's just not enough GPUs in the cloud, yeah. uh, they're hard to share. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Uh, if you are a hardcore developer, you need to have some serious GPU, uh, GPU power uh, on premises, uh, on your workstation, mm -hmm. and uh, at least up to now until Z by HP Boost, it wasn't, uh, uh, you weren't able to, to share those GPU resources. Tell us about Boost and tell us a little bit about the real problems you're solving. Yeah, uh, great, great question. So this came from just working with developers. Um, number one, they're buying workstations. They start a lot of their model development, even the stuff that they're going to scale to the super cloud. They start a lot of the development on a workstation. They do it because they get the one-on-one, they get the good GPUs, you know, whichever flavor they want to use for what they're doing. And what we what we we learned really in working with people that are doing stuff in the cloud, you know, the wait times for GPUs, when you want to use multiple GPUs, the wait times and the cost. Um, we didn't see exactly that because in with their workstations, they just use their workstation fleets. But what we realized sure. was 
hey, when the when the majority of the team is working, they're not, it's not like not always at the same time, twenty four seven. That there's right. a, lot, a lot of idle GPUs sitting there, hmm. and so and it was less about um, hey, we want to make these more available. It was more like hey, we could really streamline your workflow, accelerate your workflow, like give you many more iterations if you could just take advantage of those. And, um, you know, the idea at the time was, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could just use all those GPUs sitting there? I was like, yeah, you can't do that. Well, we found a way that you can. And so with Z by HP Boost, it's really a way to significantly accelerate the number of iterations they can get out of their workstation fleets. So is this uh, just just a clarifying question here? Is this you know somebody that might have a developer in the United States versus developer in the UK, mm -hmm. and when uh, the GPUs aren't being used in the United States, people from other places can use them? That it will work that way. Okay. Um, in fact, it'll work remotely. I mean, it really depends on how you want to use it. The ideal use case is really where you have fleets of workstations, and those fleets can be. You know, typically that's behind the firewall. Ah. It can be behind the, it doesn't have to be, right. but it can be, and it can be in different locations beyond the firewall. It just makes it very easy to basically share um, and utilize those GPUs that are sitting idle. But so, yes, you can get the 24 7 geographic, you know, advantage that we get with remote computing, for example. Right. This is different than remote computing. This is more about, Hey, I've got a fleet of workstations right here, and I can, you know, if I've got GPUs available, I can like significantly accelerate my cool. AI workloads just by using those that are there. But, cool. but like for the, you know, a typical enterprise that's not doing massive LLM training, but using doing some, you know, <laughs> fundamental day-to-day -day AI, this becomes like a little on-prem or private cluster. Am I? It, it, am I it does. Any right? it, it does. It becomes, yeah, it's basically decentralizing what you get in the data center. But, but I mean, there's some efficiencies, right? Absolutely. So for a lot of people that are spending big dollars doing cloud, in, like you have these GPUs yeah. and these resources available, and you can turn them on and use them for some, some enterprise cheap, you know, training and, and inference needs. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're looking at supporting you know, the ability to, yeah, I want to share the GPUs. And for those companies that have workstations and they have access to the hyperscalers, um, in the future, that's something we also want to support is you can borrow from here or there. It's funny, one of those solutions that, that you knew had to come and I think it's it's pretty cool that that, that you brought to that, that to the table. So essentially, uh, if you know, I have a certain site you know here in the United mm -hmm. States, even in one building, mm -hmm. and you are sure you're doing some fine tuning, uh, you're working on a a small language model, but you just need literally. You need a boost, okay? <laughs> um, right. And able to tap into this GPU, this GPU, this GPU, mm -hmm. and this G, uh, uh, GPU in an orchestrated mm -hmm. manner, not not a free for all. I think that's. Yeah. I mean, I there's value in the cloud in it uh, as we see people finding better to do it, and there's there's uh, absolute value uh, on premises with the developer as well. S uh, super exciting. Uh, there's also Z by HP Gen AI yes, sir. as well. Can you talk about how those incremental features uh, help improve the day-to-day -day productivity, efficiency, mm -hmm. or insightfulness quality uh, related yeah. to, to the workflow? Excellent question. Yeah, so again, working with customers, and this has been true for a while, it's, it's, it's certainly true today. And again, not just from talking with customers, but in the broad surveys we've done, like top of mind for every customer is the concern about can I trust the output of my model and then the output of my application? Yeah. And so um, we recognized this was a big deal and we started looking at solutions. We ended up partnering uh, with Galileo to um, get a solution that is um, works great with AI Studio and in, in the AI Creation Center. But it, it lets customers um, detect and correct for you know hallucinations, biased, drift, Right. to really give them the confidence in the models that they're using. And um, that's an exciting area that we think has a really long runway because I think trust is going to continue to grow in importance as the complexity grows and as the sophistication, if you will, of the tasks that it can do grows, it's going to be more and more important. Awesome. 
Yeah, it's really interesting as we sort of wrap up. I'd, I'd love to get you a little bit of a futurist view from you of sort of how does this play out? You know, today we've talked a little bit about how, you know, you're making AI more accessible mm-hmm. to developers, to data scientists. You're making GPUs more available. You're mm-hmm. maybe even helping enterprises, uh, you know, augment, maybe save some costs when they don't need to send something up to the mm-hmm. cloud. Um, and of course, now you're using Gen AI to enable and empower all of these people mm-hmm. to be even more efficient. So, what do you? What does the? What does the business do next, Jim? Well, we have it's Bill. Yeah, <laughs> we, or just give us or just right. whatever. Just What's something interesting. Yeah, yeah, directionally, just a directionally for sure. Um, I would say that along the lines of what you see with Boost, we see big opportunities to really make it easier for. Um, our customers to take advantage of, of the hardware that they have. Um, more importantly, we see big opportunities to enable them with their workstations to significantly increase the performance, if you will, um, by increasing the number of iterations you can get out of your, your workstation fleets. And um, I would say looking at the future through the lens of our, our innovation pipeline, the future looks bright. That I can tell you. Um, but, but we have, I, I think you'll see more and more that the world is converging on this hybrid compute model, right? right? Where you're going to take advantage of all the benefits of the cloud, and there's many. Scalability, flexibility, there's tons of advantages of local, and there's tons of uh, advantages everywhere in between. The more you can make your solutions, you know, uh, streamlined, seamless, across that hybrid compute to take advantages of the of, of whether it's local or cloud the the more value you can unlock for customers and that's that's our mission yeah i mean listen we're seeing that today with the hybrid cloud mm-hmm. um hybrid ai is coming along with that we're seeing you know full full cloud stacks uh that take advantage of this it, of course it would make sense that this would happen uh on the client uh, as well Right, not just the local server, uh, but the local uh, workstation as well. Makes sense. Well, Jim, I want to thank you so much for spending a little time with Patrick and I here. It's uh, HP Imagine Week and uh, lots of news, lots of uh, exciting innovations going on. And of course, we're sitting where the innovation began, but certainly not where it ends. Uh, Let's have you back soon. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you guys having me. And it's actually extra cool being in this garage. So you're working on cool stuff, very innovative. Great, great backdrop. Keep it up. And we'll yeah. see you soon, Jim. And and all of you out there, please keep up watching all of the 6.5 coverage here at HP Imagine. We appreciate you tuning in. Check out the other videos. Check out all of the coverage from the 6.5 across all the technology areas. Pat and I like to riff and talk about all things technology. But for this episode, it's time to say goodbye. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next time.